Hello, you video game vagabonds. Ray here with another Ray Reviews, where I give you my honest opinion on a newer video game. We're going to do this one without a script, so... This, this, this could be... This could be fun. Yeah. Today I'm looking at Marvel Spider-Man by Insomniac Studios, creators of amazing games like Spyro series, Ratchet and & Clank, and, um... Uh... Okay, so they've had some flops, but Insomniac Games comes through with spectacular Spider-Man gameplay. Okay, so just first off, we're going to start with the story, but I would like to say I'm not going to introduce any spoilers uh, for anyone that hasn't played it. Do not get me wrong, I fully understand that anyone that's wanted to play this game has probably already beaten it, maybe 100% of it too, except for me. So like I said, no spoilers. There are three different acts to the story, and so here's the thing. If you're playing this, the first act is very boring. It, it sets everything up, and even people like me, who don't know Spider-Man's real guy, like, don't get me wrong, I know the big ones. I know Mysterio, I know Electro, I know the Scorpion, I know Rhino, I know Lizard, but I didn't know a lot about Mr. Negative. It's really easy to tell who's the bad guy in the first act. They just kind of drag it out, and it seems to take forever. The end of the first act, however, that is what really drove me headfirst into this game. I kind of played it on and off until I got to the end of the first act. Like I said, no spoilers. However, if you find the game to be slow, just, just give it until the end of the first act. You will know what I'm talking about when it happens. There's kind of some low points, but the low points never really push me away from the game. The only thing that was annoying is in between certain like story missions, because of course this is an open world, which we'll discuss a little bit later, there are points where you do a story mission and Peter will be like, boy, I should really focus on the city. And you can't unlock the next story mission until you go and you do a side quest or you collect something or you go into a base and you beat up a bunch of bad guys. That's, that's, I don't want to say it's fine. Uh, what I will say though is, if I'm just trying to knock out the main story, don't make me go and do the side stuff. Let me just go to the next story mission. Another nice thing about the story is that it is not an origin story. Uh, I know this was announced forever ago, but it is nice to see a new entry into the series that doesn't start over. You don't start with Uncle Ben dying. Again, Peter Parker has been Spider-Man for a bit. He's already graduated from college. He's trying to work. He's trying to live on his own. He has already dated MJ and apparently broken up with her. I mean, there's there's just a lot. He's also already fought a lot of villains too that they keep mentioning throughout the story. But yeah, overall, good story, good pacing. Yeah, I, I can't really complain about the story a whole lot except for the first act just starting slow. The gameplay in Spider-Man is the best way to put it is there's Spider-Man and there's non-Spider-Man parts. The non-Spider-Man parts you play as multiple characters, including Peter Parker and Mary Jane. There are a few more in there that I cannot list for the aforementioned spoilers. Playing as Spider-Man is extremely fun. It's exactly what you would expect it to be. Swinging through New York, fighting bad guys, and even fighting some of the bosses despite them being really, really bare bones and simple still feels like you were playing as Spider-Man and no one else. There are a ton of moves that Spider-Man learns throughout the game that you unlock by leveling up and getting skill points. There are different gadgets that you can use as Spider-Man and the gadgets don't feel weird at all to use. Now, the non-Spider-Man segments are pretty much always stealth-based. They're a little bit slower. Personally, I didn't mind the stealth-based gameplay. It's not Metal Gear Solid quality, let's start there. However, when it comes to like mandatory stealth sections, there are definitely some very cool ones. There are certain sections like where you have to avoid the flashlights on an enemy's gun. Other stealth gameplay elements uh, involve you actually seeing Spider-Man doing something in the background as you're sneaking around trying to help him. So it's, it's definitely very cool and very well thought out. And actually, now that I think about it, Really, the biggest issue I have with this game are kind of some nitpicks, but they they don't feel like nitpicks when you are actually playing the game and trying to complete the game. So one of the issues that I've noticed, and this is when I am going to compare it to the Batman Arkham series, is combat. 
Now, don't get me wrong. Combat as Spider-Man feels very fluid, very quick. You have to move around a lot. You have to dodge a lot. And that's where I run into problems. See, in the Batman games, you can launch Batman halfway across the battlefield. And in the middle of that, press the dodge button if you realize that there's somebody coming for you. In Spider-Man, there are certain animations that he gets locked into that you cannot dodge out of. You are stuck in that animation, and it means that an enemy is going to attack you. When it comes to the Spider-Man games also, say you're right in the middle of a fight, one enemy starts to attack, and then literally less than a second later, another enemy starts to attack, and if you don't dodge at just the right time, you get hit. In the Batman games, in, I mean, any game that kind of uses this combat system, so the Shadow of Mordor, Assassin's Creed, you can actually press the dodge button twice, and you dodge twice. They even have special animations for when you dodge or block two enemies or more at once. The same thing doesn't happen in Spider-Man, which is kind of a letdown, especially considering how agile Spider-Man is supposed to be. That's one of my biggest issues with combat. Now, I will say that once I got used to fighting in the air as Spider-Man, because that is one of his attacks, it, it happened a lot less. Still, if I wanted to be on the ground and just kind of mix it up that way, I, I did run into this combat dodge where all of a sudden the animation stuck and I couldn't dodge. There's also a few missions where you have to rescue college students uh, from being hypnotized. And during those missions, no matter what, when you are throwing one of these college students to the ground to web them, you cannot dodge during that. And that's a really long animation for Spider-Man to be standing there webbing somebody to the ground. I mean, for the last thing, this is probably something that you've heard of from, I mean, literally any other review, and it's because it's a very valid complaint. Yes, the world is open, like I mentioned before. It is an open world game where you get to swing through New York, and it's a very, very satisfying feeling swinging through New York. It feels natural. Your trigger finger does get tired, which, I mean, it would be nice if they had figured out a different way to keep swinging, but, you know, you can put up with it for a little bit. What I will say, though, is that I do not like the open world sandbox collectathon that they put you through. See, this just follows like a lot of the old Ubisoft games. In fact, Ubisoft in Far Cry 5 gave up collecting these radio towers. There's even a joke about how you don't have to go around climbing radio towers. There are radio towers in Spider-Man. That is not a joke. The first mission that you have to do after you take down Wilson Fisk is recalibrate these like crime detectors or something. It actually sounds a little creepy because it seems like the police force is spying on people. Anyways, you recalibrate these and it lets you see the map. Why can't I just see the map to start with? Don't give me these stupid radio towers to go and reactivate so the police can spy on people? Like, they, Insomniac understands what they did with this, right? Like, Peter Parker is literally helping the government spy on people. That's fucked up. <laughs> That's not the only thing you get to collect. Oh, no, because in each borough on the island of Manhattan, there are various crimes that need to be stopped. Five in each borough. Oh, wait, and then as you get through the game, more of these crimes unlock, and you have to keep actually stopping the same crimes over and over and over again. Sure, they give you rewards so you can unlock uh, gadgets and you can unlock suits and all this other cool stuff, but they're the same fucking crimes every time. There is no difference in them. If you stop a bunch of criminals that are just stealing a car and going on joyride in, I don't know, let's say the Upper East Side, you're also going to stop the same criminal stealing the same car with the same sub-objectives that give you bonus tokens in Harlem. There's no difference between them. And it's five per borough. And then there's five of the main faction crimes that you have to stop. Then there are five of these, like, super crimes, I'm going to say. Not like super villain crimes, but super crimes, we'll call them. And then there's five from another faction that you have to stop. And it just adds up to the point that I don't want to do them, but I want to 100% this game. So I am, I'm not going to say forced. I, I have to do them to 100% this game. It doesn't feel like it's worth it stopping the same crimes over and over and over again. It gets boring. It's the same thing when it comes to attacking enemy bases. You start off by attacking the Wilson Fisk bases after he goes to prison. Then, all of a sudden, you have to go and attack this other faction's bases. Then halfway through Act 3, oh hey, guess what? Here are two more factions for you to attack, and their bases that pretty much play the same exact way, you just have to fight different enemies. That's not fun, Insomniac. 
really, it's it's not that fun. Actually, while we're kind of on this topic, let me just let me just throw this out there. The time frame for this game is really weird. Like you throw away Wilson Fisk into prison at the very beginning of the game. You've been playing this for less than an hour, or at least I was, and then all of a sudden, we're having an estate sale for Wilson Fisk. And they're acting like it has been several weeks since he has been put away. But even in the time frame of the game, it's been one day. Like, the, the day has not changed from day to night for me yet in this game. It just felt very, very confusing. Especially considering that there are actually points in the game where it will show a black screen and say something like, moments earlier, three weeks later, three weeks earlier, you know, stuff like that. But they don't do that for the main game, for, for certain parts of the main game, I should say. It just felt very confusing because to me it seemed like this all is taking place in one day, which is impossible. But apparently it's taking place over the course of several weeks, they just don't bother telling you when several weeks have passed sometimes. Like I said, these are just nitpicks. This game is really good, and the only things that I can find are things that make me go, man, I, I just wish that they had changed just this one little thing. Like, this game is good. It's just these things kind of stuck out to me. Also, why don't we fight the Silver Sable? Is it because Spider-Man doesn't fight women in this game? That's sexist. All in all, Marvel Spider-Man is a great game, and it takes some risks with characters and the story of Spider-Man that Marvel itself has failed at doing. It's deserving of a 9 out of 10 because it is a very solid game that is very well put together and has a well-crafted story. That's it for Marvel Spider-Man, a great game with a few flaws that are really just nitpicky things. It's hard to say if it beats the Batman Arkham games, which honestly will probably always hold a place in my heart for reigniting my interest in The Dark Knight. I won't lie though, this game sent me to the comic book shop to check up on Spider-Man's latest adventures. Here's an obligatory thumbs up or thumbs down comment. If you do like my reviews, maybe stop by my Twitch channel and watch me stream poorly. Or, or not, whatever, D just do whatever you want to do. <sighs> Man, it's really hard to end these videos.